Algebra 2 CREM, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Basics, Trigonometric Functions, Concept Number 17, Trigonometric Values for 45 Degrees. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 Master. What we're doing here is so effective. I'm coaching you to turn your wants and desires of getting an A or perfect test scores into a brand new paradigm. I want to include everyone who needs a boost in Algebra 2, and if I could stick every single math student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I probably would. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to get your healthy dose of the complete Algebra 2 cram session beyond the trigonometry series, okay? I know you have lots of peers and classmates or even colleagues who are taking Algebra 2 with you as well, and they could really benefit from the complete cram session as well. So spread the word and tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com for pricing and ordering instructions for the complete Algebra 2 cram session. You'll be glad you share the information because they'll make great study buddies. And last but not least, the concept um, of cramming often has negative connotations. But what people are actually thinking of is hurrying, which is the result of fear and can consequently be destructive to your learning process. We're not hurrying here, we're cramming and there's a huge difference. Hurrying is um, basically jam packing tons and tons of unorganized information into your um, mental spiritual DNA over a tiny amount of elapsed time. Whereas cramming is taking quantum leaps in your understanding in an organized way in what seems like a very tiny instant, okay? So let's delve into the concept of trigonometric values for the acute angle 45 degrees. Trigonometric values for 45 degrees. Express the exact values for the sine, cosine, and tangent of um, the angle 45 degrees, okay? I'll give you a moment to think and definitely press pause if you need to. And while you're thinking, notice that instead of using the variable x, here I use the lowercase Greek letter theta. It's just um, it, like any other variable x, y, but since we're dealing with a Cartesian coordinate plane, and we're probably, we're gonna use um, x to represent the x coordinate, we don't wanna double up on variables. That's why I opted to use theta as a placeholder for any angle, and specifically this case, the angle 45 degrees, okay? So continue thinking. All right, so hopefully by now, you are able to press pause and come up with an answer. And if not, that's completely fine. That's why we're here. So let's do this together. Before expressing the trigonometric um, values for 45 degrees, we need to understand the concept of standard position. Okay? And doing this is going to simplify finding all the trigonometric values. Because 45 degrees is an angle, in standard position, specifically located in quadrant one, it's going to have about six to seven key features. First of all, its vertex is located at the origin, and the origin has the x, y coordinate points zero, zero. The ray on the positive x-axis, which you can see is slightly indicated here or implied by this bold highlight, is called the initial side ray. The other ray terminates in quadrant one, and this is called the terminal side ray, okay? So here goes our angle theta, which will be 45 degrees, and we see that it terminates after growing in the counterclockwise direction at the terminal side ray. And we're gonna be cute and call this ray R for short. 
Okay, so R being short for re. And let's take things a step further. Um, a fourth key feature of this standard position concept is cutting off the terminal side re at a particular point, which we're going to call P, P being short for point, and P is about right here. It has the coordinates X and Y, representing the X coordinate and the Y coordinate, okay? And so um, the, fifth, the, uh, the fifth point is that we're going to resolve this. Now it's not a terminal side ray. It's a terminal side segment, a line segment, because we cut it off here between point P and the origin. We're going to extend it or resolve it into its X component, which is X. This X corresponds to this value X. And we're also going to resolve this terminal side segment into its Y component, which is Y, and this Y corresponds to this Y, okay? So the um, terminal side segment rises to the level of Y, and it extends to the extent of X. And notice that this is an aside. It can, the coordinates can be positive in quadrants um, one and four, specifically for the X coordinate, but negative in quadrants two and three. And for Y, it can be positive in quadrants one and two. But when we reach the negative X aspect of the Y axis, it can be negative in quadrants three and four, okay? But as for the terminal side segment, um, this is going to be the sixth feature of the standard position concept. It's not an actual coordinate. It's a measure of length or a distance. And the way we determine that is by using the distance formula, but we're figuring out the distance of the ray R. So instead of D, we're gonna have R. And we're basically taking the square root of its the X coordinate of P squared plus the Y coordinate of Y squared. And the reason why this is a distance formula is because the distance formula states that the distance or measurement of a segment length is going to be X minus X squared. Well, you usually use the final X location, which would be P minus the initial X location, which is zero. So we don't have to indicate zero, zero here. That's why you don't see a second X coordinate. Same for Y plus y minus y squared. And then you take the square root of the whole thing for the distance formula. But again, because the vertex is located at the origin, which is also the initial point of the terminal side segment, the initial y is going to be zero. So the final y is this y here, minus the initial y, which is zero. That's why we don't indicate it, okay? So in summary, R is a measurement of segment length, and it's always going to be positive. And overall, now that we've established this standard position concept, oh, and I also want you to know that angles in standard position are acute because they're bound by the quadrantal angles, zero degrees on the x-axis and 90 degrees on the y-axis, okay? And the trigonometric values for 45 degrees are going to depend on the ratios of x, y, and r, okay? So let's go ahead and highlight them for 45 degrees. When you're dealing with um, the fractional ratios, they're going to always simplify to radical 2, which also um, corresponds to the coordinate of y. Well, after simplification, this side will also simplify to radical two. And the nice thing is here, in the case of 45 degrees, this means you have um, not only a right triangle, I never indicated that, because after resolution of the terminal side segment into its point and highlighting the X and Y coordinate extents here and here, what we do get is a right triangle, but you also have an isosceles triangle because two legs of this um, imaginary 
triangle form after resolving the terminal side segment into its x and y coordinate, they have the same ratios, okay? And um, after fractional simplification, the ratio of the terminal side segment should always measure two. So just in case you're wondering, the square root of two is about 1.4, and it, like the decimal never terminates, so it's basically you know um, an irrational number. But that's also another aside. All right, so now we can go ahead and figure out the trigonometric, um, the exact values of the sine, cosine, and tangent trigonometric functions. So for sine, it's always going to be uh, when you're on a Cartesian coordinate xy plane, the coordinate opposite 45 degrees, which is the y coordinate or the side measurement. That's going to be radical 2 divided by the hypotenuse or the um, terminal the length of the terminal side segment and that's going to give us radical 2 over 2 the same not the same but in the case of the cosine of 45 degrees we're going to have the x coordinate or the adjacent side divided by the terminal the length of the terminal side segment or the length of the hypotenuse however you uh, call this at, at, or you know, mention this in your mind. All right, so therefore we have radical two over two as well. Now we know that tangent is a derived quotient function by dividing the sine of theta by the cosine of theta. And in the case of 45 degrees, um, radical two divided by radical two or the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate is just going to be one, okay? So this is our answer the exact values for the sine, cosine, and tangent function of the angle 45 degrees. All right, and as you can see, intellectual comprehension of this material was not difficult at all. And after the short amount of time it takes to complete the entire cram session beyond the trigonometry portion, you'll be able to answer a battery of questions about all Algebra 2 concepts. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order the complete cram session. You'll be glad that you did.